In reality, science is also part of religion. I'll explain. Science originates as an antithesis to religion, not by itself. This is a derivative from atheism. Atheism means against God. So it originates from God, but doesn't agree with Him. That's how it comes into being, the contemporary science, materialistic science. It had to prove that God doesn't exist. Atheist is a scientist. He has to find arguments to prove that God doesn't exist, that God, that human being is God, Lord and Master of his destiny, and so on. This is called science, and religion already includes materialistic perception of the world. What the, the science has discovered today was known in the Puranas, the ancient Vedas. For example, atomic time is described. The atomic time through to cosmic time is described. What is the atomic time? It's the speed of light that traverses the core of the atom. That's one unit of atomic time. <coughs> this is one measurement. Because on the atomic level there are immense speeds and they are measured by atomic time. How did people know about this? Nowadays we wouldn't be able to detect it with any uh, equipment uh, to monitor it. The, the nuclear devices, we won't be able to monitor it. We don't have sufficient speed, processing speed. The mind is static, almost, almost static. The people of the past, with the help of yoga, would accelerate their mind on uh, the thinking process and would be able to enter another time dimension and to see it, what happens on the atomic level, to uh, transcend with their mind. They didn't have any devices. Uh, it was just the human mind and the cities, the abilities. It seems impossible, but I heard it as a fact in the times of war, in extreme circumstances, when the human was a, a bullet was shot at someone, he could see. He was so focused, so alert, uh, that his mind would accelerate, and he would be able to see the bullet leaving the gun and approach him. Time would stretch, the the, the mind would accelerate. So yo the yogis are able to accelerate their mind or slow it down to see an yet another dimension of time, a different dimension. Because nowadays we measure time according to our the abilities of this body. We have 100 years. That's how I. Uh, the, uh, the, uh, an ant also has 100 years of its own. There's tremendous speeds, different functions. He is able to accomplish the, the mission of his life. Uh, so these are different dimensions of existence. This is a science. The science of observation through ourselves, not through devices, but through the body as a device. This is a spiritual science. In the same way how I observe the material nature, all these processes, micro and micro processes, I can observe myself, and this is called religion, the spiritual science. Who am I? I am consciousness, I am not the body. This is where the process starts of self-realization. So, nature, uh, uh, science and religion was artificially segregated, but it was done by atheism. All the spiritual, great spiritual people of, of the past were all scientists. There was no distinction. At some point, atheists segregated religion, because religion lost its knowledge and became degraded. So why do we need this religion? It's blind faith, not possible to prove, useless dogmas, so the science uh, got the upper hand, discovered this, entered the Earth orbit, discovered the atom, the protons. So, just look what uh, science has achieved. Religion is useless. Uh, that's when that was when the religious leaders got degraded. A uh, person with developed abilities doesn't need cell phones. 
or devices. He can see far in the distance if, if need be. He can traverse great distances without any vehicles. When the Soviet alpinists uh, uh, climbed on uh, Mount Everest, the Hindus were surprised. Why did you go there in your material body? You can go there on, on your subtle body, but the yogis are able to do it. So in the Puranas, in the Vedas, this knowledge is described, it is now confirmed by the contemporary science. Some of them they still can't confirm, for example, the dimensions of the universe, they're not able to confirm. In the Vedas it is described. It's interesting that science can predict the end, but cannot understand what the beginning is, doesn't know how it all started. In the beginning there was Word, and the Word was God. It's, the Bible says this, and the Vedas also confirm that it was that the sound was in the beginning, and the sound creates matter. Uh, to be more precise, it was the light. The, the spiritual world is the light. Light is transformed into a wave and the wave becomes more dense and becomes substance. Uh, and the substance is degraded, then it becomes light again, it disintegrates, it becomes light. Our material world is basically all the dark universes that are lit up by the sun are created from spiritual energy, from the spiritual world, in the God's image. So, we, if we see a human being, we can sculpt a replica. So, this is a replica of the spiritual, internal spiritual world, but it's not eternal because matter is inert and it disintegrates. Everything is destroyed with time, that's the influence of time. That's how we live in this body, it uh, eventually d disintegrates and the soul is eternal, from, comes from the spiritual world, enters a new body to continue its existence in the material world. And that's how we reincarnate, change bodies, go through the horrors of birth, d death and old age. Um, and when we are fed up with it, we inquire, who am I? Why am I in this cycle of uh, suffering? The Buddha said, it's the world of suffering. As long as you have desires, material desires, you keep suffering. Get rid of your material sufferings. How? Either you enter nirvana, is the Buddhist method, or you develop spiritual desires. So you can also uh, get become get liberation by the way of nirvana. In this, you never come back from the spiritual world. You don't have to take birth again. This is the very concept. Scientists know a little bit about reincarnation, nowadays maybe more than before, but and some acknowledge reincarnation, but they, in the past they would deny everything, especially in the Soviet times. It was a very a gross materialism, belligerent materialism, they would stifle religion. <laughs> It was a very difficult time. Now, times are changing, people get under spiritual understanding and then understand it's science, it's not some concoction, it's not some imag imaginary things, it's a, they, this is the world of spiritual sciences that exist in the soul. I don't want to die, right? It's strange if it's the law, if it's the law of nature to die. Why? I, why do I not want to die? I don't want to feel pain. Pain is natural. I don't want to get sick. I don't want to die. Is it the body that doesn't want to die? No, it's the living entity in the, inside the body. Because it's not characteristic, it's not natural to get sick and to die. This is a conflict, internal conflict. Uh, fear for my body. I'm very scared that this body is changing, gets old and dies. And I'm very scared to think about it. It's best not to think about it. Let's just distract our attention. And it is a big problem that the uh, soul has a different nature. Uh, it's a big, <laughs> big evil for the soul to die. There is no birth or death for, for, for the soul. 
It teaches us how to be fearless. You are the eternal living entity. Be, be calm and to learn how to be peaceful. And in this state you'll be able to understand yourself and this world. You will conquer death. This is a great science of the Vedas. If um, the sci science cannot solve the problems of birth and death, then what sort of science is this? We haven't conquered diseases such as uh, flu, that's more clever than any scientific scientist. Scientists admit it's the punishment of God. 